What's going on guys? Today's build video is gonna be a little bit different. AMD was kind enough to grant us early access to the brand new game, Resident Evil 3. And we're gonna be basing our system build around the recommended system requirements. Some parts here and there might change, but for the most part, we're gonna be taking a look at those requirements and seeing what a system like that can actually do. Now, as far as what we're gonna be building in, that's where things get a little bit special because we're not gonna be using a traditional case. Instead, we're gonna be building in this. As you guys might be able to tell, this is a totally new set. I spent all day yesterday arranging it, moving everything from one side of the house to the other side of the house, taking furniture from downstairs, moving it upstairs and vice versa. We actually rearranged quite a few things here. And as a result, I tried to get something set up so that I could do some filming today, but this is not finished by any means. The lighting is a little subpar right now. I have no background light going on at all. I don't even know if I'm getting any echo off of my mic and things are gonna improve slowly uh, over the course of the next couple of weeks. But as such, it's gonna prevent me from doing a lot of the traditional work you might see in a, a build video here, because I don't even have like my B cam set up. So what we're gonna do, instead of going over all the parts individually, like on this table and showing you all kinds of cool B-roll, is we're gonna go shopping. We're gonna go into my office, we're gonna run over like the shelves that I have there, see what I have available, compare to like the recommended system specs for Resident Evil 3, and then we're gonna build a system inside of this. This is the Inwin Alice. And this case has been around, I guess for a few months now, maybe, maybe a little bit longer than that, but it is completely unique. There's nothing else like this on the market. And if you're into your system looking like Tupperware or something, this is definitely the case for you. But I actually really dig it. You can completely customize the look of, your, of the Alice by buying different covers that Inwin has available. These are just mesh fabric covers. They're, they breathe a lot. They're not totally opaque. So you can kind of see through, see the lights inside. And I really like Inland's approach to this because this is not an expensive case. This costs like 60 bucks on Amazon and I got it like two days later. And you can do 360 millimeter radiators in here. You could do full water-cooled builds. There are actually distro blocks available for this case. And it's something that I might explore if you guys are into that. So let me know if you want me to do more work in here because I'm kind of curious to see what kind of a, like a high-end system I could put inside of a, a $60 hamper. But in any event, I hope that the build comes out really cool. So let's go see what we have in the office that we could use for this project, put together that system, and then see how Resident Evil 3 performs. All right, Resident Evil 3, let's take a look at the system requirements. Here they are. All right, so minimum system spec, uh, Core i5-4460 or FX6300, eight gigs of RAM, GTX 760 or R7260X, 45 gigs of storage, and this will get you 1080 30. Let's go to the recommended uh, i7 3770 or FX 9590. Interesting. 8 gigs of RAM, a GTX 1060 or an RX 480, 45 gigs of space, and anticipated performance at these specs is 1080 60. I think we want to go a little bit. I want to base around this, around the recommended, and then go a little bit higher than that, I think. So let's take a look and see what we can find here. So first up, let's talk processors. So these processors that they're recommending, the 3770 or the 9590, are really, really old. So the closest analog to the 9590 that I have is this, the 8370. Um, and I did, I did a video on this I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And it's definitely still moderately capable, but I really think that we should step up from that. And we don't even need like a high-end CPU, like something like a, like a, like I think I have a 3400G in here somewhere. Uh, this is a 3600X. This is a 2600. This should be the 3400G, 3400G, perfect, okay. Let's use the 3400G and uh, base our system around this. Next up we need a motherboard for our 3400G and 
To be honest, the best board for it is probably the B450 Tomahawk, considering price. But I'm, I've seen so many builds, including my own, with uh, with this board recently that uh, let's let's do something else here. Let's, uh, let's take. How about this? I think this. This is the this is the least expensive X570 board that I have, and I really wish that we had some B550 options at this point. But um, the Gigabyte X570 Gaming X is still fairly inexpensive. Um, and will do just fine for us. All right, moving over from motherboards, let's take a look at graphics cards. Now they said a GTX 1060 uh, or an RX 480 for 1080 60 gameplay, but we don't really, 1080 60 is a little, still a little lame. And uh, if we could step it up to 1440, I think that might be best. Cause I don't, I don't have a 480 on hand. I do have a 580, which would be fine, I guess. But why don't we, why don't we try, and I guess, I guess we are deviating quite a bit at this point from the recommended specs. Uh, but why don't we go with like a, a 5700. Why don't we do a Strix 5700. Uh, this is the non-XT. And this, I would imagine, is going to allow us to get up into some good frame rates at 1440p. Which uh, is always more fun. Let's move away from GPUs and focus on memory. So they said... Um, Eight gigs of memory should be enough. Let's let's test that out. Let's go with eight gigs. Let's see how that runs. Um, I think I have. I think I have a uh, eight gig kit in here somewhere. That's it. That is it. I have a two by four gigabyte kit of Patriot something DDR4 twenty four hundred. Not. This is not ideal. So, not ideal speed for Ryzen, GDR4 2400. Um, I don't think I have any other two by four gig kits. Let's test this and see how it goes. So let's move over from memory um, and take a look at storage. Now my normal storage disclosure always applies. Pick whatever storage is best for your needs. Storage is not going to impact system performance. And if you have a lot of games stored locally, you're going to need more storage. So I'm just going to put in um, an M.2. I have a bunch of them that already have Windows on them. Uh, this is not one of them. I think this is one of them. Oh, I lost it. Hold on. Got it back. Yes, I think this is one of them. Um, so we'll go with this. And... Um, this should be plenty for our needs for today. So when we talk about power, this is not a particularly power hungry system. Anything 550 to 650 range should be good. So what do we want to use? The This should, I think this is, this will be fine. Oh, get it out of there. It's the V650 from Coolmaster. And there you go. This'll, uh, yeah, this'll do great. So here are our parts, and I have decided that we are going to test out the RX 580. We'll build the system initially with the 580 because that is the basically the recommended spec for Resident Evil 3. See how it performs at 1080p, and then swap in the Big Daddy, the 5700, and see what kind of performance differences we get with the rest of our system. Ryzen 5 3400G, uh, Gigabyte X570 Gaming X motherboard, Coolmaster V650 Gold Power Supply, some Patriot Memory, and Samsung 960 Evo SSD. Boom. Let's get this thing built.
So here it is guys, all completed the Inwin Alice build for Resident Evil 3. And like I said, this, uh, this is just one of the stock cloths, the stock fabrics that come with the Alice and it's obviously adorned with all kinds of Inwin logos. It looks pretty cool, but you can get other patterns like camo or different solid colors or, you know, basically whatever you want. But this is like, it's really soft, really breathable. And it's, it's very, uh, I don't know, appropriate for something where you wouldn't want to close off the interior completely just uh, just to aid with airflow but uh, it looks pretty cool i mean it's definitely different and then this top here is supposed to prevent dust from like settling on top of your components while also allowing for more airflow so that's pretty neat let's take the fabric off and we can see the final product of the build itself kind of feel like i've halfway undressed this thing uh, but here is the interior and this was such an easy build Everything is so open and accessible. You can reach in from every side because obviously it's just completely completely open. So you have access to all your components, very easy to, to hit all your screw points. And then there's all this space down here, which is one of the reasons that I want to explore doing some additional system builds in this thing because this is just right now completely unutilized. So a 360 rad can go like down here uh, and then here you can mount additional storage options or you could potentially mount a distro plate so that might be something really fun to try you guys might notice that there is no ring no amd ring around this and i forgot that i had actually you could see it up top i had actually broken off the ring uh, when i did a previous build and i needed to, to shave some height off of the cooler so but it doesn't affect the function of the cooler at all it's just the, like the decorative ring around the outside but here is our 580 and here is our eight gigs of memory and uh, we're gonna see how they perform in resident evil 3 right now all right guys what's going on we are here in resident evil 3 and we are capturing on a separate system so there's no load being placed on our build uh, so this is just straight gameplay and right now i don't know what's going on but unfortunately i can't capture the audio the gameplay audio on my capture system there's something funky happening that I'm gonna have to address it another time. I've been trying for like the past couple hours and I don't know, it's making my head explode. So we just wanna take a look at the performance of Resident Evil 3 with the RX 580 system and then we're gonna swap over to the, uh, the 5700. So let's take a look at the settings. This is the opening scene of Resident Evil 3 and we'll look at our, uh, our graphics options. So 1080p and V-Sync is off. And then texture qualities are on high, shadow quality max, everything else is on. Volumetric lighting is on medium, I guess this is what it defaulted to. Um, but everything else is on and turned up. So uh, this should be uh, pretty close to max fidelity that you're gonna see at 1080p. And uh, let's see what kind of performance we're gonna get out of this. So we're running right now at 96 FPS. There I am. So 96, 93, 94. So staying consistently above that uh, 1080, 60 target. And uh, oh, cool. I'm going to turn into a zombie apparently. So that's fun. Yep. Going full zombie. So I wish you guys could hear the sound here because without it, it's... I don't know. I'm sure it's not the same. But uh, we're, we're basically focusing on the frame rate. So... You know, don't worry about that. I'll put some music in the background or some funny sound effects or something. Um, oh, she's gonna... Well, I'm gonna kill myself. That's that's nice. Cool. And game over. Oh, it was all a dream. Okay. Okay. Yeah, staying above that 1080 60 target seems to be not really a challenge for this RX 580. Um, and you can see that the GPU is running at 64C, so we're basically on an open-air bench here with the, um, the Inwin Alice. So, do I have to go back to the bathroom? I guess so. Uh, that was unexpected. Who's this dude? 
So with uh, with some faster action on screen, we've dipped a little bit down into the 70s as far as frame rate goes. Oh, this guy is resilient. I don't know if that door's really gonna hold you there. All right, I guess I gotta get out. Let's get out. Okay. So, uh, hopefully that'll, that's, that's the end of that guy. We've killed him. Su successfully. Probably not. So let's, uh, now that we're done with that section of the game, let's, uh, let's swap in the 5700 and crank this up to, uh, 1440p and uh, see how we do. Well, I've discovered our first problem with this case, and that is graphics card clearance length. I thought, or I just, I guess I didn't think that there would be an issue considering that this is basically an open air bench, but this is the Strix 5700 and it does not fit. It's too long by probably five or six millimeters and I cannot wedge it in any further because, here, let me, let me get down here. So the power supply enclosure area uh, is, is not gonna allow for any any space there so that's as far down as I could push it and we are still um, not able to seat the graphics card properly so that oh boy okay that's always fun so we're gonna have to swap in a different 5700 not it's not gonna affect our testing at all we just can't use this one which is unfortunate the only other 5700 that I have is the reference cooler design so that's what we're gonna use and it fits obviously with no clearance issues. Uh, it is, you know, blower cooler, so it's gonna be a little louder, but I think we'll be all right. Back in Resident Evil 3, and we're in our settings options with the RX 5700 installed. So we bumped up to 2560 by 1440. I did change from window full screen to a borderless window to full screen. That shouldn't really make a difference, but every other setting is the same. So I haven't changed anything else. And uh, let's see how we perform. So we're at 105, 104 frames per second at 1440p, which is pretty damn good. So yeah, this is obviously a different area of the uh, of the game, but uh, we went, we just went through a whole bunch of like uh, intro action and. Um, we were, at with the RX 580, we were kind of still fluctuating in that 70 to 90 FPS range. And um, it, every, it, gameplay was really smooth. It had a couple of dips, a couple of spikes in frame time. So I'm not entirely sure what that was about. Um, but I think you're going to get that with, with a lot of GPUs every once in a while. Um, you know, but so far here with the 5700, it's been very smooth. You can see the frame time on screen with that line that's scrolling. So anytime you see a spike in that line like that, that mean that indicates a, a, a kind of a, a dip in your frame rate. So you want to see as few of those big spikes as possible. Uh, but we are running around now at uh, 87, 88 FPS. So yeah, this game seems pretty well optimized, I guess. Because uh, even on lower end hardware, you know, the, the RX 580 is, is, that architecture is aging right now. And um, it was still able to maintain well above, I mean, well above 60 FPS, 1080p, and oftentimes above like 80, 90 FPS. So, in a game like this, where we don't, are not trying to get 144 frames per second, it's not required for the gameplay. I think that that kind of frame rate is is great. Like I, I think that if you could, especially right now, like I'm having some some pretty significant uh, tearing issues. So if you're like me and you're playing on a monitor that does not have adaptive sync, uh, I would recommend locking the frame rate at 60 and enjoying the experience. So now we're back tops top side, and uh, my mission is to restore power. 
so frame rate's still doing really good and uh, I don't know this is a really good experience I, I like I said I am sorry that I'm having some issues with capture yikes and am I dead I guess I'm not dead dead come on bro Man, I suck at this game. I'm used to like, ah, let's just get out of here. How about that? Oh, that's not the way out. Come on. Run. Um, yeah, this is a much different uh, gameplay experience than I am used to. All right, I'm going to cut it off here, guys. But uh, you can see the performance. And uh, it seems to be running really well on this hardware. And I think that you could probably get away with a pretty budget system and still run this game just fine. So thank you very much to AMD uh, for allowing me to test out this game a couple days ahead of time. And um, thanks so much for watching, guys. Get subscribed to the channel if you are not already. And uh, I will see you next time.